Hey guys, James Russell Taylor here for Rock Sound. It's the latest of our video calls where we've been chatting to everybody while we're all at home at the minute. I'm delighted to say from Ben and Prison, Larissa's on the line. How are you, Larissa? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Not too bad, not too bad. Yeah, I'll start this off in the way we've started off every single one of these, which is to say, you know, hope you're keeping safe and well and all your loved ones in the same position. Uh, how have these last few months of lockdown been for you? How have you been occupying your time? Um, yeah, it was kind of challenging to start with because obviously we had tour plans that had to be cancelled. Uh, we were actually going to be in Australia uh, when the lockdown hit the UK, so... It was kind of depressing, <laughs> but we've been able to utilize the time and just be creative and um, yeah, just spend some time at home. It was kind of nice to have a break as well, but obviously I just miss being out there. Yeah, I felt for you in particular because I saw uh, I saw you talk about it the other day Australia because you were meant to be out there for download, right? And uh, yeah. you know, like many of us, definitely looking forward to seeing my chem back together, and then <laughs> sadly not meant yeah. to be this year, right, man. Oh, oh, that was awful. <laughs> such a shame. But, you know, it'll come back around at some point. It'll come back around at some point. In the meantime, let's talk about uh, the music you guys are putting out there. So Primeval's just come out, primarily a re-recording of a lot of your early tracks. I guess the initial question there is, why did you decide to do that? So we were aware that not many people actually know um, our first two EPs, especially The Fire the Tyrant, because it's kind of known really to... to to download or listen to so we kind of wanted to like ourselves just dig back into the songs and just make them sound better because they sound really awful on the old recordings we <laughs> I mean the the, the fight entire we recorded in the living room so we were kind of always hoping to give them that sound that we hoped they were going to have uh, the first time around so we just took the opportunity and we recorded everything and added two new songs uh, at the end because we just wanted to show this is where we started, this is where we're going. Yeah, that's a, it's a good way of doing it. I mean, in terms of the actual re-recording itself, other than, like you say, moving out of the living room and getting a kind of better recorded sound, were there any other major changes you found or anything you were like, oh, I wish we could just tweak that from last time? Were there, did you discover anything new you wanted to put into the songs other than just the recording itself? Yeah, some of the lead guitars are different, for example, and uh, the Primal Chaos was never recorded to to click, so that's something that we were able to do this time around. And Joe, our new drummer, he just um, was able to put like a little bit of his own spin on the songs, which was quite refreshing. And yeah, it's, the drums sound amazing on this. Yeah, no, really cool to see you be able to do that, you guys. And then, then there's the two new songs on there, of course, as well. I would imagine even if it's subconscious, going back and looking at your earliest material in that way, it's got to affect how those songs came out in some respect, right? Did you find revisiting that older music inspired the new stuff at all? I would definitely say so, because uh, while we were just still practicing uh, the older songs, just so we can go back into the studio, because we haven't played them in like years now as well. So while we were practicing them, uh, the guys were also writing uh, the two new songs and... Um, when when I heard them for the first time, when they were kind of kind of ready but not quite, I was like, this like ties into the old material really well because it kind of uses these rough and heavy bits that we used to have in in the Primal Chaos and 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 Defy the Tyrant, but adds like this whole melodic and more atmospheric thing to it, which I thought worked really really well. So. Um, it was quite a happy accident. <laughs> yeah, no, it's cool when you make discoveries like that. And uh, did you think, like, was there more songs left on the kind of cutting room floor from those sessions? Have you got more material from that time that's maybe being kept away to the side for now? Uh, we we always have, like, lots of songs that never made it onto something. So I'm sure we at some point we're going to dig into them and see what we can pull out. <laughs> but, um, yeah. We've, we've also started writing new material, actually, so, yeah. Yeah, great. I was going to ask about that. So that, that's been the primary focus for the band in lockdown, is it just actually getting some new material done and getting it right? What kind of form is that taken? Are you guys, do you live near enough each other or is it more kind of remote writing at the minute? It's more remote for me because I live up north um, in West Yorkshire and the rest are based in Bristol and Newport, Wales, and um, Joe, our drummer, lives in Croydon, so it's kind of not been that easy. But um, luckily, 
Ash and Ben who do the main writing. They live in Bristol and Newport, so it's only the bridge that divides them. So um, they were able to go and see each other and write together as well. So that was a positive thing. I had to demo vocals for the new songs at home in the office, which was kind of unusual for me because I, I don't know, I always um, worried that the neighbors are going to hear and think that I'm like some sort of freak or whatever. But <laughs> this takes working from home. That's all you're doing. You are working yeah. from home. Yeah. How, how did that physically work for you? Like, have you got like, were you basically building a little makeshift studio for yourself? You got a mic and stuff, I take it, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I got a mic and an interface. I just plug into my MacBook and just go for it, which, um, kind of works quite well but at the same time it takes a lot longer because you yourself are kind of more critical of what you're doing and then you have to constantly stop and like stop and start yourself and then cut everything so that's kind of taking a little bit longer than it would be if I went and recorded with the guys but um, yeah it's quite it's quite cool just being able to do that by yourself. Yeah, I mean, thank God for technology, right? It means that everyone can kind of keep on going. With it. In terms of the wider stuff, then, are you, I mean, is there band Zoom calls happening and all that kind of stuff I take it? Like, how's the communication in terms of uh, the general vibe of where you guys want to go next? Um, yeah, we mainly talk on in WhatsApp or Facebook. Yeah. And yeah, because luckily we'll be able, we've been able to practice as well because at some point you were allowed to travel I don't know how that's going to be because I haven't really seen them since we recorded the music video a few weeks ago. And um, yeah, so we've been able to see each other in person as well, which was quite refreshing. And we did these show streams, which kind of felt a little bit more like playing a show and like just being able to feel a little bit of normality in a time like, like in a time like this was quite refreshing. Yeah, I definitely wanted to ask you about both of those because uh, I've, I've, I've talked to so many bands recently where like like yourself, you know, they're shooting music videos under these conditions and then trying to figure out ways to do live stuff. Let's start with that music video. How was that experience for you? Were there different restrictions on set and all that kind of thing? Yeah, uh, well, the crew was wearing face masks. Um, most of the shots were filmed individually, so it wasn't like the whole band all together. So... So we tried to keep distance there where we could. Um, yeah, we had to kind of do it within two days because we had all these underwater scenes as well that we had to film in a pool. So um, yeah, it, it, it took longer than a usual video that we did before, but it was definitely worth it. It was really fun. Yeah, that seems to have come out really, really well. And then in terms of the live stream stuff, like you say, again, every band has been having different approaches, different ideas of how best to do it, how best to communicate with their fans and stuff. How was that experience for you guys putting together a, a proper live stream performance? Um, it was kind of weird because <laughs> obviously like the whole organizing is, was normal. It was actually quite easy to find a venue. We The first um, the first stream we did was in um, Manchester Academy and uh, obviously no one had shows going on there so that was quite easy and um, some of our friends uh, work there so we were able to organize it. It's also nice for the venues because someone is utilizing the empty space and you also obviously paying them for that which venues need the, the money at the moment so I would actually quite encourage um, all kinds of musicians just go into a venue and play a show if, even if no one's watching like I mean you, you can record it and show it to your fans they, they will love it because they haven't seen you play in almost a year you know um, so yeah that was quite nice but it was really really strange being on stage and not having anyone in front and having, because um, the last show, the last real show we played was in November last year. So it's been almost a year ago now. And um, I think we all kind of gained weight and became a little bit unfit <laughs> over the lockdown period. So it was kind of difficult just being on stage and moving. And you just don't feel this adrenaline just like running through you if it's not a real show. You know what I mean? Like, there's no, no people in front of you. It's not giving you the kick that you need to actually just like, like give full power. 
Yeah, no, of course, you're always going to feed off the crowd most of all, aren't you? And that, that's interesting you say about, you know, needing maybe a minute to get back into it. Did you find that when you were rehearsing for the shows again, was it a case of straight back into it or did you did it take a little while to kind of adjust? Because like you say, it's a big it's a big gap and a big unexpected gap in your schedule. Definitely took me some time to adjust, honestly. It was a bit different when we played the, the second one, which was... Um, a live stream it was completely live and it was for hotel radio in London at the dome and um, that felt a little bit more natural because you kind of had that excitement okay people are watching live and that kind of felt a bit more like playing a show and um, yeah by that time you were kind of back into it I think it was mainly just not feeling the power of the audience just like the first time round, uh, that made it so difficult for me especially yeah fingers crossed it'll all come back because I know particularly I mean again not to dwell too much on things that didn't end up happening but things like that Parkway tour and then the shows there and everything would have been so so great I, I really hope that comes back next year because uh yeah what a great what a great night that would be in an amazing venue and all that kind of stuff um Let's talk briefly then about this new music you guys are working on. Do you have any plans in mind of when fans might be able to hear? I mean, obviously you've just put out this release with a couple new songs, but given the schedules are slightly up in the air at the minute, do you th is that the plan moving forward maybe to get some new music out sooner rather than later? We definitely want to have it out next year. Um, we're going to start recording end of December and then all the way through, through January and hopefully have it all... Uh, mix it mastered by February and then hopefully we can put it out maybe in fall I don't know it would be great to put it out when when we can play shows again but all of that is kind of up in the air so we'll see uh, yeah fingers crossed man fingers crossed well in the meantime um like we say you know this live stream stuff seems to have gone very well and it's been really cool seeing bands like yourself and, and loads of other people try it in those different ways is that going to be the plan you think for the foreseeable doing more kind of things like that have you got any more more venues and stuff in mind yet uh, yeah we do have plans to record a couple more shows we want to do like a really um i don't even know how much i can say but we want to do something special so we're just planning to do that at the moment and see how it turns out. Have you seen the Behemoth one? I have seen bits of the Behemoth one. I've not watched all the way through yet, but no. Yeah, it looked insane. <laughs> it did look insane. I mean, yeah, there's, there's. I, I just love how everyone's tried. The Trivium one really impressed me. I've got to say, I thought they did something very, very cool. The Biffy Clyro one, I think, was spectacular. They just properly yeah. used the entire venue in that way. But that's the cool thing, isn't it? Just being able to try... There's no, there's no one way to do this, right? You, it's Definitely. open to ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that yeah, the so, idea? Oh, yeah, we, we just want to be a bit more creative and just see what we can pull out there. <laughs> yeah, cool. That's exciting. I think that's the way you got to be, isn't it? When, uh, when there's no shows around at the minute, you've got to find ways to stay creative like that and do other kind of interesting things in that way. It's exciting, man. Definitely. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, well, Larissa, it's really nice to chat to you. Um, congrats on the new release. Looking forward to more of these live stream shows and everything. And then just hopefully, please, God, let's bring some live music back, hopefully next year. <laughs> and we'll get to see you out there playing these songs out on the road. Uh, but in the meantime, stay safe. Love to the rest of the band. And uh, yeah, we'll hope to catch up with you soon. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. And stay safe yourself. And hopefully see you soon in person. Absolutely. All right, Larissa, everybody.